So, as some of you guys already know, I went to an event called Salon Privé last week. Now, basically, Salon Privé is a concourse event where people get their cars and they get them judged. They're all these classic motors. I saw some incredible cars while I was down there. I absolutely loved the day. It was fantastic. It was great weather. Everything was going very well. And in addition to these old cars that people were, you know, entering into this competition basically to see who, you know, which one's the best, which one's the most original, which one's the, the coolest, you know, things like that. I'm sure those aren't the official categories, but they should be, in my opinion, but that's just my take. But in addition to that, there were a few stalls around as well where people had some cars that were, you know, that were unique in some way, or, you know, they had something to kind of show off. And one of the stands that I went to was one called Electrogenic. Now, Electrogenic they kind of they kind of specialize in making regular cars, petrol powered cars, diesel powered cars, even hybrid ones, into fully electric cars, which is really, really cool. It's an interesting kind of way to to go about the whole you know environmental impacts of cars. Like it's an interesting way of doing it. And I actually managed to grab an interview as well with the CEO Steve. And interestingly, what actually brought me over there was a video that I'll probably play now. When I saw the none other than the DeLorean. Yes, the DeLorean from Back to the Future going over there, going up to back at the stand because it had already been to the, the main stage where um, it was being judged. So then it went back to their um, it went back to their tent basically and I found it really cool because it was so quiet and I'm like, damn, the, the engine on that's really quiet. Turns out it was an electric car, which is one of the cool things with this um, this interview. So, yeah, I, I managed to grab an interview with Steve. Now, the audio quality is not the best of this. It's just an audio interview only. Obviously, this was outside. There were people walking around, the cars as well, some very loud cars as well in the background. But I hope the audio quality is all right for you guys. But, but yeah, really interesting interview. And here's everything about what Electrogenic do and how it's kind of a, another option, really, when it comes to you know, electrifying your transportation methods, basically. Well, Steve, I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit more about, about your business and everything, about all these cars that are on here. Some have definitely caught my eye, but the long and short of it is, is that um, it's, it's you know, it's uh, restoring, well, upgrading old cars in a way to become EVs. Yeah. So at Electrogenic, we are um, EV powertrain engineers, so EV powertrain specialists. So we design and manufacture Specialist EV powertrains for the military, for small car manufacturers, and also um, for classic cars, which is what we're most well known for. Um, and so we do a small number of bespoke projects every year for mm -hmm. particular customers. Um, and also we design and manufacture uh, drop in uh, conversion kits, which we then distribute internationally through our international partner dealer network. Mm. Because one one of the things that a lot of our uh, readers and listeners and everything like always want to talk about when it comes to EVs is things like the crossover point. Is it is it better to have a petrol car and just keep running it, or get something new that's an EV? But this is kind of the best of both worlds in a sense because you get to keep your old car, but you're not emitting any more greenhouse gases into the air. You get to make it electric. That's right. And so part of our philosophy is that nothing's cut, nothing's drilled. It's all 100% reversible. Mm -hmm. So. Um, for example, if you have an E-Type Jag, uh, at the moment the way uh, many old cars are valued, it's it's uh, it's not just the car, it's the matching numbers, original engine and so on. Um, but the harsh reality is that E-Types are not so reliable, they take a lot of effort to keep on the road, keep them running sweetly. Mm. Uh, so, but what you can do is simply unbolt your engine, um, keep it, um, put, crate it up and keep it, bolt in our powertrain um, and use it every day as a, as a daily driver and then but you still have the option to then reverse if that's what you want to do mm. so it, it's the best of both worlds absolutely you get to keep the look the amazing looks of these cars I mean the one that caught my eye immediately when I came here was the DeLorean and everybody knows that from Back to the Future and it's obviously yeah. a very storied car in its production and everything like that but to see it electrified it's um it almost seems like it's meant to be like because it's a very futuristic car because of the fact of the future obviously yeah. to see it electrified like that i think that's I think that's magnificent to be honest and it, it still is it's a real design statement it really mm. catches everybody's eye absolutely um, and so yes yeah, so what we've done with the delorean so the uh the car is is the same as the original weight mm. um so it the handling is as it was designed by Lotus to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, the happy thing is that it now has uh, more than twice the power, twice the torque. Mm. So it, um, 
So original 0 to 60 was 10, 10 and a half seconds, mm. and now we're slightly under five seconds. Original wow. top speed was 85 miles an hour, something like this. Uh, it's now 130. So you can do 88 miles an hour then. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, so one of the things I didn't know about DeLoreans until, until, we, until we had this one in our shop was um, that the Speedo stops at 85. Does it actually? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, um, but yeah, so and uh, the delightful, the delightful thing that we've 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 learned about this car since we converted it was that so the original um, the original suspension was designed by Lotus, yes, but it never got a proper workout because the the engine was just awful. Um, but <laughs> now that we've we've got the 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 power and torque that the car deserves, yeah, you can really you can really feel the suspension. It really is fabulous. It's great. It's a mm. great drive. It handles really well. Uh, and of course, being electric, it's instant rapid torque. Mm. There we go then, yeah. And I heard as well about you guys uh, supplying the first ever electric vehicles, electric Land Rovers to the army as well, the British military. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, we work, uh, we partner with Babcock International. A, they're a, a big um, defense manufacturer. Um, and we, uh, you know, we, we're, we're the experts in the EV part. Mm. Um, and uh, so, yeah, together we, we made four experimental Land Rovers for the British Army. So two of them were what they called um, R Wimix, which is the sort of four-ton uh, version, armoured version with a 50 caliber machine gun and, and, and in a turret and, and all of that. And the Army are absolutely delighted with them because so the, the purpose of doing these is the Army is is looking to the future. Mm. Uh, so EVs have a lot of advantages. They they you know, one thing that people don't think about so much is that all the fuel that's used in a forward operational base has to be carried there mm. um, and if you put fuel in an EV versus putting fuel in a diesel um, then you you to then running around the EV is, is at least a, at least is 40 to 50 percent fuel saving mm. um, so if you have diesel then you generate electricity with it you put electricity in the, in the vehicle rather than just putting diesel straight in the vehicle you get 40 to 50 percent fuel saving which means that um, if you apply that to Afghanistan for example that means you get 25 percent fewer casualties because 60 percent of all casualties in Afghanistan was is escorting fuel convoys wow. um, and of course they're very fast they're much faster they're silent um, and mm. so when we're on exercises uh, with some cameraman for the PR the cameraman missed the shot because you know, it's too quick they even know when they know they're coming this is too quick um, the off-road it's amazing because you've got all that torque completely under control available at zero revs um, and so you can stop on a slope you don't have to slip the clutch it's just it, and, and one of the things that the army is very interested in is driver fatigue mm. um, because you know, somebody's shooting at you and there's a lot going on with a conventional um, drivetrain whereas um, with the electric it, it, it's it, it's just easy it's just mm. one pedal <clears throat> we gave them 12 uh, 10 different hill descent modes so there's all sorts of things you can do and, and it, it, so they, they they asked us to make it, these vehicles so they can look at their tactics how they're going to change their tactics and then as they go into the next round of procurement mm. a portion of those will be EV um, and they'll know better how to specify them because they'll be working with our vehicles so yeah. uh, it's, it's a really interesting project. Absolutely and another interesting project as well uh, Jason Momoa and he's yes. been a client of yours as well restoring the was it nearly a hundred year old Rolls Royce? That's right um, a 1929 Rolls Royce Phantom 2 um, so that was that was a real labour of love. Uh, it's first of all we want to make it beautiful to do justice to the original, and, and I think we succeeded in that. Um, but secondly, it was a real engineering challenge because um, so it's a it's a ladder chassis, which means that there's room for um, the batteries because uh, it's a big, heavy, square car. So you need a you need a fair amount of batteries to give it a decent range. Mm. Um, but the ladder chassis is full of all sorts of things that run the original car, particularly the original braking system. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so we had to rearrange all of that. Um, the we added a uh, we, we added a hydraulics to the braking the original cable braking system so that we could control those. Um, well, give 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 
more stopping power at low speeds. Mm. Um, but also, the, one of the innovative things about the, the Phantom Two when it came out was it had a it had a servo system. Mm. Um, so, uh, it, which was a sort of a, a, a clutch affair that that started working at above 20 miles an hour, mm. which was situated inside the gearbox, yeah. uh, which we removed. <laughs> so we then. Um, uh, we, we, but the, the car was designed for 60% rear braking, um, so we uh, basically designed some special aspects of the re power regeneration system to mimic the original um, brake servo. So uh, there was a lot of very interesting engineering challenges in that car, but the result it drives beautifully. Yeah, and it looks beautiful as well. I'm sure I'll get some pictures of that, and I believe it's. Uh, on a, on a TV program as well, on either Prime or uh, Sky in the UK, I forget which That's right, it's is. on, it's on uh, Discovery Plus. Discovery Plus, yeah, there we go. Yeah, in the UK, right. which, uh, you can access that through Prime. Yes, yeah. right. And the, the series is called On the Roam, like roaming around on the Rome. Um, yeah. And we're episode five or six, something like that. Nice one. Well, thank you for your time. And if you want to plug any of your social medias, I mean, I did get clock how many followers and how many likes you guys are getting on. If you want to plug any of your social medias at the end of the interview, feel free. Yeah, well, just um, please check us out uh, at our website, which is www.electrogenic.co.uk and Instagram, Electrogenic Rev, R E V. Nice one. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview from Salon Privé and for much more content on the world of motoring and motorsport, do keep it tuned right here to themotoringchronicle.com. Like, share, comment, subscribe and ring the bell as well to see much more video content just like this. Seriously doubt it on this surface but let's hope that does not go to 88 miles an hour otherwise there'd be a big fire here, it's a hot day. I think, if, um, I think if the DeLorean did some time travelling today, it would definitely not be a good idea. Um, I think we'd have to evacuate this place pretty quickly. Um. <laughs>